I think at this point we are pretty good. So as you can see, I've simply kept moving stuff around and tweaking this camera move. And now I'm pretty happy with it and I can move on to the next phase. What I'm gonna do now is divide the scene into different layers, into Maya layers, scene layers. What I mean by layers is simply separating the foreground, midground, background number one, two, and so on. I'm not gonna do a layer for the sky, as the sky is gonna be a full 2D mat that's gonna be projected into new gone to a sphere. So one of the reasons I'm doing here, I'm doing this is simply to make my life easier when it's gonna be time to render different passes. And also at this time, at this point, I'm starting to think about a process I'm gonna use because as I have explained before, there can be a lot of different workflows to approach a shot like this. It can be like fully CG, fully 2D mat, a bit of both. So at this point, I'm starting to figure out that out. And for example, in this point, now that I have my camera move locked, I can tell for sure that the whole foreground, the whole fly through to this canyon, it's gonna be fully CG. So what I mean by that is that I'm gonna actually render the 270 frames of the animation. So this is not gonna be one frame projected and painted over. I'm gonna have to render the whole sequence. Why? Because, well, the camera is really close to the ground. It goes really fast. There's gonna be a ton of details and parallax with all those trees that I'm gonna scatter. So it's just gonna look a lot better if it's full CG animated. And also, because we're so close to the ground, there's gonna be quite a bit of motion blur, meaning that I actually don't have to push the CG to an insane level of details. You can really get away with a lot of things. It's just a matter of being able to recognize the different situations in which you're gonna apply one kind of workflow or the other. So in this case, for the foreground, I'm sure it's gonna be full CG animated. We might add a bit of details with a DMP pass on top of the houses, but I'm not even sure it's gonna be um, that useful. So now I'm simply organizing a little bit my 3D asset from the Kit Bash 3D pack. And uh, also those names I'm using here, so foreground FJ, this is basically what I'm also gonna recreate into my new script later on. So that is also one of the reasons why it's quite useful. So that's it for the foreground and orga organizing our 3D assets. Then the midground. So the midground is just gonna be the bridge, the hill with the castle, and the plane, the ground plane that is on top of that, basically. And then for the background, well, it's gonna be the first chain of mountains, background one, and then the second chain of mountains, background two. Now, for those mountains, I think it's probably gonna be a full 2D mat, but just so we have um, a guideline in 3D space, I'm gonna keep them, and I will probably export them also to Nuke, so we have um, a good idea of where those mountains need to be into 3D space. Okay, so we're almost good. Just checking if everything in is into the right layer. And as you can see, it works quite nicely. And we're almost ready to move to the next phase. And as I said, as I keep going now, I'm also thinking about the kind of workflow I'm gonna use. And so the foreground, once again, is gonna be completely animated. The whole frame range, we're gonna render it. For the midground, which is so, the hill with the castle and the bridge. I think at this point I'm gonna do also a full animation, but with some DMP on top of it to add more details. I'm gonna do a full CG animation because first, I think we still have a lot of trees, but also I will probably add some water under the bridge and uh, I think it's just gonna look better if we can animate it. And also for the reflections, it's just gonna look a lot better. So yeah, so foreground animation, mid ground, half, half, and the background, probably just 2D matte painting projected onto cards inside of Nuke. 